as a lighting designer for over 30 years on projects worldwide, light's ability to create emotion is to me the most profound. In a profession that takes a great deal of technical knowledge, the softer side of lighting is often forgotten. What does light bring to us that nothing else can? Why do we feel the way we do when we interact with light? How is light so subtly powerful how is something so intangible able to affect us so profoundly? Light is visual, light is emotional. As a lighting designer, it's my job to translate the technical aspects of light appropriately and specifically on every project. Light drives the emotion of theatrical productions, movies, television, fashion shows, and corporate events. I'm going to explore all these ideas and questions as I talk with some of my favorite collaborators. Calvin. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I, I just muted it, silenced it, so you won't hear him. Because... Zach's trying to. Hi, Christian. Hey. Hi, Zach. Hi, Calvin. All right. Well, let's let's launch in here, and let's. I think you know the idea is to keep it casual and and just have fun. Um, and and uh, we'll get to some fun. We'll get to some fun discovery. Almost immediately, <laughs> uh, and I can tell you why. Because we make form, and and w w how do you perceive form through light? We almost immediately start thinking. Well, how can we shape our spaces and shapes our form? in all those light conditions. And so Mother Nature provides some. Yeah. The rest is up to you guys. <laughs> yeah. I, we wouldn't think of not having a lighting consultant, lighting advisor, whatever, yeah. on board immediately. The process is often that a lighting designer is brought on kind of after the conceptual thing, depending on the the, the the point of the project itself. There are instances like at Herald Square where lighting was fundamental and technology was fundamental to the entire project school. So you are there from the very beginning. Lighting is the most integrated part of any design. Um, it doesn't mean it's the most important part because everything comes together to become the most important thing. But it's the most integrated. It's the one thing where the reading of the project is fully embedded into the design itself. Um, and you can't create a space and then later bring in candles or light fixtures on, um, on extension cords and say you have a project. When we bring an architect on for our ground up or major development projects, um, the, the need for a lighting consultant comes in very early on. A great example is we didn't bring in a lighting consultant as early on on one of our projects that you actually came in and helped us finish mm -hmm. at 75 Rock. Yeah. Um, and the consultant that was on there played catch up and sure. there, you know, some of the selections that were made were more, okay, well, this is the design and we have to fit it in. I really think about the need for a lighting designer from you know, the very, very beginning of any project. You know, doing mostly large spectacle events, there is a dramatic difference whether we're in a venue with an open roof or a roof that can close. Uh, there's a dramatic difference whether we're in daytime or nighttime. From the word go, as, as I put together a team for any event, Lighting is one of the spokes of the hub of the overall team. Why do you choose to go to the doctors? <laughs> Why do you choose a lawyer, right? You don't know the law. You're not an expert at all those things. Uh, you don't know every part of the human body and you, you could figure things out, I guess, on the surface. You could read a contract and try to interpret what certain things mean. I see it the same way. It's an expertise. Uh, and so 
I think that's for me, the why the, there are so many nuances in the craft. It's a combination. Uh, again, when you go across the entire creative spectrum, there's a couple of different approaches which aren't mutually exclusive, which is one wanting to go to people with whom you've worked before and whom you can trust and whose instincts you trust. Uh, you trust their ability to get the job done. Uh, you often trust their ability to get the job done within a budget where that is an important constraint. And then you also look to putting the right person together with the right project. So there may be times that I'm going to uh, need somebody for scenic for something that's radically different uh, than what somebody who's my go-to person might be. And I would go to tap, you know, somebody different. I actually think it was Michael Cesario that taught us in costume design class the true definition of a designer is someone that makes choices. We don't actually invent anything, right? That's an inventor, but a designer makes all these choices and the combination of the choices is what's an original design. And so to me, anytime there's a choice for lighting, you need a designer. I mean, if it's two lights, well, which two lights? What level do you need them at? Where should they be positioned? What color? Or if it's a thousand lights. So, it's to me, it's a pretty easy choice. If, if you, if there's a way to control the lighting and you need to choose what lighting you need a designer, it's, I mean, it's that simple. Once we have an idea about what kind of effect we want in this, this particular project, then we go to a lighting, lighting designer as much as well as of course, structure engineers and so on. Sure, and start sure. to create a team that can speak to each other. Um, and the lighting is key. You know, structure makes the state stand up. So of course that's also, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but you know, no mom, no hand sort of thing, but mm -hmm. lighting, we can't command it. We have to work with someone who can provide it. Well, mostly because, you know, my background is very theatrical and music concert based. So lighting always figures into enhancing whatever event you're doing and whatever, um, client needs are. They, they always seem to be amazed at when we bring you to the table or, you know, a lighting designer, how it can change the outcome of the event. Well, it certainly enhances and makes the overall design look, feel all that much better. Doing a job without a lighting consultant is like cooking a meal without adding seasoning. You can have all the best ingredients, but if you don't put any of the seasoning in, it's not going to really turn out the right way. The lighting designer is often the first person you talk to and almost always the last. And I find that to be really fascinating because it really is in the beginning, you need to turn on the light effectively to do anything, right? When you walk into a dark room, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's the last thing you're going to adjust before you get ready to do what you're going to do? Well, I would say it's different because it, it directly impacts the effect that we want to create. You know, um, without light, people can't perceive things, can't see anything, you know, or with the wrong light, wrong kind of light, it's, it, it expresses the, pro, the, the our architecture very differently. Um, so, I, as I said, without a lightning partner, we can't really achieve the visual results right. that yeah. we're looking for. The difference with a lighting designer compared to other designers on a project is a lighting designer actually has the most flexibility as well, which I think is really unique. You know, for, for our industry, the sets come off the truck, it's built. If it's the wrong shape or color, it, there's not a lot you can do, <laughs> but a good lighting designer brings the tools and understands how to use the tools enough where he creates flexibility within there so that you can adjust. And I think we do that really well. I mean, you're, you're always prepared. I think you're, you're definitely thinking 10 steps ahead 
on the show, on the project, so that you are prepared to make adjustments in the field. Favorite aspect? What would that be? <laughs> what is a favorite aspect? Everything. I don't know. Like, is there is there something that I think I'm much along the lines of of you like to work with lighting designers because they I you know they tend to be this way. I learn a lot from the lighting designer. What we look for in a good lighting partner is a mutual learning and mutual sharing. And I think learning being one that's really, really important because you kind of build on that experience with every project. I like to say that we're in support of, right? That you guys, you guys create the form and then we're there as, as, as strong support, right? Well, yeah, I would say more than support sometimes <laughs> you know you gotta inspire too, yeah which oh is that's great we always yeah. love in mm -hmm. a creative partnership is that yeah. you riff off of each other and you inspire each other and then yeah. you discover new ways to make that right. happen most lighting designers are very acutely aware of current architectural design and um they're able to push us, hmm. say, well, if that's really what you're doing, then why are you doing that? Right. Can't you make it better? So it's, it's that dialogue uh -huh. and, and not being afraid to hear an answer you weren't expecting. Right. Um, I, I really enjoy that part of it and being able to listen and let the process mm -hmm. unfold. And what's also nice about the lighting design and working with lighting consultants is if done correctly, you can actually play with the mood or the, the mm. feeling of the space, even when the space is finished. So it's not, it's not like working with a stone consultant. Once right. that's marble right. on the wall, you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. A lighting consultant, you can walk into a lobby and you can say, you know what, this feels too cold. Okay. Well, let's just adjust the, the temperature of the bulbs or let's just adjust the, you know, the, the brightness of what we have going on. I think it's the final touches mm -hmm. because that's where that's where the true collaboration occurs. I'm generally, I mean, you and I tend to collaborate a little bit more up front, and I think we get into that about where is where are we going to hang trust and where are we going to hang letters. Sure. We're trying to even sure. make that part of the creative part of those, element. Yeah. But, but generally speaking, I'm not looking at your lighting plot. We're not kind of collaborating on that mm -hmm. as much. It's that last final touch in the room. That's where the magic happens. And yeah. even if I'm not completely involved and you're, you're doing your craft at that moment, watching that to me is one of the best parts. Cool. It's when it all comes together. And yeah. to even push on that, it's even, more amazing when I say, well, can we make it feel a little more energetic? And you say, hold on. Right. And get on headset, bark out a whole bunch of numbers. <laughs> and all of a sudden it feels more energetic. I think you have that ability to adjust. And because that craft is more flexible and if you've planned properly and if you designed that set of equipment properly, you're giving yourself the ability to okay. be collaborative and be easy. Right. No, no problem. We can shift that. We can right. move that. We can adjust that. So right. I think the flexibility is also one of the cool areas. Execution. <laughs> it's, You're waiting for that one. Yeah, that, that one's easy. Um, it's a very, as I said before, it's yeah. very sophisticated. Many of the fixtures mm -hmm. haven't been around that long. The manufacturing process is not efficient. And the control of those fixtures, the wiring, the compatibility, the energy code, all of those things our conspiracy <laughs> against um, project delivery, timeliness, cost effectiveness, and so on. And it really is hands-on. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the value of a lighting designer is 
that they know where these potholes are and they can help steer us around them. Challenging is if, the, if we work with a lot of designers who don't understand their power and their importance in form and space okay. making and, and, and not know enough about the limitations and possibilities of architecture to then have a equal conversation. So if you yeah. know enough about our craft and I know point. enough about yeah. your craft, we yeah. can brainstorm. Otherwise, yeah. it's like talking to, a, you know, you, if you're talking to us and we're like kindergartners or vice right. versa, right. 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 it's yeah. really hard to, um, yeah. uh, you know, to achieve what, what, what the goals are, I think. There's, there's two things. There, oftentimes, I find lighting designers to be technical first. Mm. and not creative first. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this about you, but in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen, we saw this in college. Mm -hmm. Most of the students that were lighting design students were the students wearing the telephone cord with the C-wrench. Mm -hmm. And they had the GAC because mm -hmm. the way and the reason they entered into the craft was from a technical side. What do you find challenging about working with lighting designers? The budget because everybody always wants their toys and yeah. wants more money to bring the toys to the table. But it's a double-edged sword because oftentimes, you know, especially you, when told that we can't and we have to cut certain uh, dollars from the budget, you've always had solutions that don't jeopardize the final product. When we work with a set designer, and certainly you're on board during that process, but you can take their renderings, enhance them with your lighting yeah. and yeah. be able to convey them. That allows me to convey to a client really what it's gonna look like. And I think a good example, certainly where we do many, many renderings is the US Open. Sure, sure. And That's that, a, a render party. You've been able to bring that stadium <laughs> to life and yeah. allow us to certainly sell our designs and yeah. our ideas to the execs at the USDA. than the obvious that we could conceivably be sitting in the dark. Um, <laughs> there is that. Um, I think, you know, again, th there are puns galore, um, but, but lighting will bring the show to life. You know, so whether you're on a football field, whether you're on a tennis court, whether you're on a stage, um, whether you're in a ballroom, you can bring in the sets, you can bring in the people, you can write great scripts, you can have great video, but it really doesn't come alive until you turn the lights on or at key times turn them up because uh, lighting, of course, can be the absence of light as well. But it really is the ultimate piece to framing any visual production of any kind, no matter where you are. At the, at the risk of um, brandishing a pun, I would say that, uh, that lighting designers have the unique ability to illuminate, uh, you know, the project. That, um, that at the end of the day, you could create this spectacular event but if you don't present it in the, wait for it, best light, uh, it, 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 it's all for naught. It, it brings a level of dynamic flexibility mm -hmm. into the space. Mm -hmm. You know, a great example is like 75 Rocks Lobby, as we keep, sure. you know, I keep going back to yeah. That's a lobby that during the daytime we wanted to feel one way. And in the evening, we want it to feel another way. And if we're going to be entertaining in that lobby and doing a, an event, we want it to be a, a completely different way. And all we're changing is the lighting. Right. And the, that lighting done the right way gives you that flexibility. Yeah. I think that lighting, as said earlier, it does really inform every other area of your project in a way that um, elevates it and any client 
that I know that we've worked with and that I've worked with in the past, when, you know, lighting can, can be a piece to their event that they never considered could transform their event to a different level. Now, mention one project that once anybody's been there, they never forget it. And I'll never forget the first time I took a, a very well-established artist to this space and to see him react. And that's the Pantheon in Rome. <laughs> Pantheon in Rome's been there for several thousand years and it has a hole in it called the Oculus. And the Oculus is the entire concept of the project and it's also the lighting fixture for the project. It lets the light in through as a shaft physical presence in the room that illuminates mm -hmm. the entire space. And I'll never forget, uh, my friend and colleague said, but there's a hole in the <laughs> building. <laughs> and it was amazing that somebody had not known this and it was so great to see it because that's everybody that walks away from that building remembers that it also can be completely invisible mm. like nothing else can or it can be completely obstructive or intrusive like nothing else can and that's the beauty of it 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 can be the thing of the moment or it completely right. it can completely disappear right. other elements uh an architectural uh doorway can't disappear it's gonna be there a weird angle that some architects created that's a cool feature is always mm -hmm. going to be that feature and if it gets old mm -hmm. you're not moving it right uh for a set design in in a theater production the set design is it's there it's in your face right and chances are it's not it's not changing but lighting we know when you walk in to a room it could be the first thing you notice or we can make it completely unnoticeable and so to me, those are, those are the things that lighting brings to a project that nothing else, nothing else can bring, nothing else can actually organically change mm -hmm. and move as much as lighting can. The way to create emotion. Perfect. <laughs> I couldn't agree I mean, with you more, <laughs> right? I but couldn't agree with you more. It. Yeah. Oh my God, light is the most essential characteristic in in uh, in life, I mean, okay, I'm living here in the countryside, and God or Mother Nature is remarkable. Mm -hmm. And the same situation, okay, the same trees, the same field, on a rainy day, or in a stormy winter night, or in a sun, bright summer day or a spring day, it's the same setting, but the 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 feeling is totally different. So we can build an architecture and what lighting designers bring is that emotion and that changeability yeah. so that when you just turn on that light in the corner and the place is moody mm -hmm. or, or you just you know, crack open a, cur a, a curtain and there's a little light outside and it gives you that emotion or at night when you you come home to a building or come to your home and you see, and it's lit a certain way. It creates emotions like nothing else. And we don't create that emotion. We need, we create the context for which you for sure. create those emotions. Yeah. I find that uh, so exhilarating and it literally occupies most of my time to think about how best to do it. And, and, and it just, it's, yeah. For me, that's, that's absolutely it.